Hello, and welcome to the Oikos Family Podcast, episode number 100. Welcome, I am Sonia Wood, and today I have a few things to share with you. As always, that's why I'm sitting doing a podcast. Okay, so get ready, because I have good news for you. Isn't that nice to hear some good news for a change? And I hope that this good news helps you to shine and be happy. Okay, so the good news is that in episode 99, I spoke about rising costs. And now that we are at episode 100, I am very happy to announce that we are not putting our prices up at Oikos. How about that? There's the good news. I just thought, I'm so happy that I can get to share something good with you instead of this doom and gloom that just seems to be everywhere and everywhere you turn it's just more you know doom and gloom news in fact this last weekend I heard about the fuel price going up again and again and again and in actual fact I heard that it was just going to be ridiculously high and I heard about the power, you know, usage prices going up, and I heard about the load shedding being more, and so on and so forth. For those of you who are not in South Africa, load shedding simply just means that the power usage for uh, home home business, everything in the country is um, halted for a bit. (laughs) So they literally turn off the power for an hour or two every day or every second day and sometimes two or three times a day. So that has been rather something for people to have to deal with on top of everything else. So I'm happy that I can come and give you some good news. And it even gets better because first off, I'm not having to put the prices up. As I mentioned in episode 99, it looked very, very much so the case that prices were just going to have to go up. But instead, what we did is we went on to a four-day week starting in March. And that meant that everybody took a cut in what they take home, which is difficult for us. But it is good in that we don't have to put the price up, prices on any of the resources. The better news comes with the following, and that is we've actually reduced prices. (laughs) Would you believe that? We looked at each and every item and we thought, okay, is there a way that we can reduce this? Do we have enough wiggle room here to bring this price down? And we could on some items. Other items, we had to leave them as they were. But there has not been an instance where we've put the price up. Now, you know, I'm not going to give any promises as how long we will be able to keep that going. You know, maybe next podcast I'm having to tell you, oh dear, We've had to put the price up, but I'm hoping not. You know, we're making other plans to avoid having to give you that news. You know, we don't want to tell you the prices are going up. We want to give you good news like we have today, which is very appropriate on this episode 100, that we can talk about something good and wonderful. And so that is the good and wonderful. It's to say that the prices are either staying the same or they're coming down. The other silver lining, because that's the thing I've been focusing on since lockdown, um, since it all started, but the other silver lining is that even though there's all this doom and gloom around us, and if we hunt for the silver lining, we can find it. And here's the silver lining I have found with regard to the fuel prices going up. And that is, it means that we have to think a little more carefully about just buzzing about, you know, hopping in the car and going somewhere. It now has to be thought about, do we need to? Is it necessary? Perhaps we can adjust our lifestyle a little bit so that we monitor a little more carefully how often we're just in and out. And is that not now a good thing? I'm sure that it must be a good thing to slow us down and for us not to be on the run. I just think that if I consider families at home and not going out every single day of the week to nip around the corner or whatever it might be, but rather to have that whole day at home without having to go out because they've thought about 
the cost to the family with them in and out all the time. And they've thought, okay, let's change this. Let's just go out twice a week instead of five times a week or once a week or once a month. What I mean, I know I'm stretching it now to once a month, but why not, you know? I mean, I'm just thinking how our circumstances, our own family, you know, were in a situation whereby it was as such we couldn't run around due to just our reality of chronic illness and so on. And because of that, we ended up just, you know, having many days at home, long stretches of just being at home without going out anywhere. And that side also needs attention, you know, because it can become imbalanced. But the value we got from that, to me, was great. And that being that it reduced the amount of distraction. It reduced the amount of expense, obviously, because we were using way less fuel even all that time ago. Um, It meant that when you started out your day, you didn't actually think about where you have to go and what, you know, where you have to be because you knew you were just being in the day at home. So mentally, it was less of a strain on the planning and thinking and organizing. And so what did that result in? It resulted for us in a quieter day, a more peaceful day, a less stressful day. So I'm thinking the silver lining for the price fuel increase could be that people could adapt their lifestyles to actually have the result of something that is of great value to them. And people won't be paying any more for fuel because of limiting how much fuel they're using. So there's that. It's not as if there's an extra expense or that now having to really struggle or battle through this Perhaps it's unavoidable. Maybe, you know, people are having to use the same amount of fuel. Maybe mom is staying at home and dad is going back and forth to work. So now suddenly the fuel, their fuel costs every month are huge, you know, more than what their budget used to um, allocate for that. So there is all of that. But I'm just going to encourage you to look for the silver lining, even if it means that that is your reality, that, uh, you know, a sudden expense increase is causing a lot of extra cost considerations on you and your family, then I'm going to ask you to look for a silver lining within that, as I have pointed out about limiting the amount of running around. But that is also why I'm so excited that I can tell you about us not putting, us here at Oikos not putting the prices up. I'm just hoping that that's going to be one less strain on families where they have to think, oh, no, now, you know, when they go to purchase the things they need for the education of their children, they now have to consider allocating more than what they used to, well, what they did before, let's say. And I'm sure those of you who are listening would possibly agree with this, and that is lockdown hasn't necessarily been an altogether bad thing. I mean, I know that the world has changed extremely dramatically in the past two years, and in many ways there's been some tremendous sadness and trauma. In fact, we have that experience firsthand. So I'm not lessening that at all. But what I am saying is looking for the silver lining within the lockdown experience is important, I believe. And I actually also believe that there is the silver lining within it. And that's what we looked for. And we have found the silver lining in some areas. I'm sure we're going to find more because we're looking for it. (laughs) We've been intentional about finding that silver lining wherever we can. And so that's just why I'm talking about costs and fuel and lockdown and in South Africa, load shedding, load shedding. Uh, Okay, let let me talk about load shedding for a few moments because it's quite severe. You know, people can get quite disrupted by the load shedding that just happens If you can imagine, you know, you're planning to do some baking in the afternoon for your children's birthday party or whatever, and all of a sudden there's load shedding, and so now you can't use your oven, and everything just gets turned upside down. Well, I must tell you something, and that is we decided a couple of years ago to go off-grid and to install solar. Now... I know that is a big undertaking, but we sat down and did the maths and we worked out that it's going to be worthwhile in the long term. 
but it was an incredibly big commitment. And the fact that the outlay was astonishing. But what we did is we did it in baby steps, as baby steps as we could. We didn't go all in initially. We went with what was affordable at the time, even though it felt really painful to do regarding cost. But, you know, within months of having done it, we were really smiling. So there was, we very quickly got over this um, payment remorse, <laughs> if I can call it that. And, and we were celebrating because we were experiencing the benefit of the lifestyle of being off-grid. It certainly came with its adaptions and transitions and difficulties, but each one of those was a worthwhile difficulty and a worthwhile adaption. But anyway, this podcast isn't about living off-grid because that's another whole series, I suppose. And some of you might be identifying with it, those of you are listening, others not, because maybe you are being challenged by the load shedding in South Africa. So let me go back to that and say, when we were being challenged by load shedding, that was happening a couple of years ago, which is nowhere nearly as severe as it is now. I understand that. And I realize that with us being off-grid, we're not being affected by it in our home. But Oikos is actually not off-grid, so we still have that side of it, the load-shedding side that disrupts the day and the workflows and everything else. That is very much a reality for us. But back to the home. Do you know what we did in load-shedding? We lit candles, and I used to say, thank you, ESCOM, for load-shedding, because now we're having dinner by candlelight, and we wouldn't have Quite truthfully, we wouldn't. I wouldn't have thought about going and getting the candles and having a candle at dinner had we not had the privilege and the luxury of flipping a switch and having the lights on. And then it gets better because if you don't have power, there's lots of other things you don't have. You know, you can't do the things that you would ordinarily do. And so you find new things to do. So when there was load shedding, we just thought, oh, yay, this is an opportunity now for us to get out that board game and sit and play a game. Now, I know you've, if you've been following the podcast or the Oikos Learning Lifestyle, you would have picked up that, you know, board games and playing board games is a big thing for us because we have just gained massive value from it. I mean, really, I am just very seriously considering doing a dedicated series for that because of the fact that there's just so much good to give from that. But anyway, back to the silver lining from low shedding times, we would play board games, which I know, again, just like I wouldn't have gone and got the candles out, I wouldn't necessarily have got the board game out after dinner to, you know, put a battery light on the on the board on the table and play a game. Um, that is that is what happened. And so what happened then is was the silver lining. We experienced the silver lining of load shedding because we ended up having this wonderful evening that could otherwise have been an evening distracted with things that are very quick to bring distraction when you have power to do so. <laughs> so I think today's podcast is all good news, even though all these things are real challenges and yes, there are difficulties, but I have just experienced that the difficulties and the challenges can actually really be good, 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 really and truly. On the flip side of the difficulty is something very good, and this is the same with the challenge. You know, recently we were at a wedding, and I was sitting next to somebody um, whom I'd never met, and this lady was a mountaineer. And she was telling me all about her various mountaineering expeditions she had been on. And I was listening to the stories and I was I had this question in my mind was, I wonder what motivates her to do that? Because she's so passionate, clearly, and she just loves it and she loves talking about it and sharing her experience. But the question kept on coming to me, what motivates her to want to do something that is so challenging? So I said to her, what motivates you to do it? What motivates you to be a mountaineer? And she said, the challenge. And I, it really struck me because I thought, you know, here I was thinking that challenge would be something that would be really difficult to face. And wh what is good about that? You know, what is good about going into a challenge? However, that was the very thing that motivated her to do it. So 
It was the challenge and overcoming that challenge and the experience of that that is, was the actual thing that gave her so much joy in it. And then she went on to share about how this mountaineering and the challenge in it has helped her in so many areas in her just everyday living. And so because of that, she would go and do it again because there's so much that she takes from that challenge that then becomes supportive to her in her everyday living, in her everyday reality. I was giving it a lot of thought after that wedding and after talking to her and meeting her and listening to all her stories about how her um, backpack, or I don't know if that's what you call it, um, hiking pack that she had to carry seemed to get heavier with every kilometer. And I just thought, you know, that is so true. You know, when you're carrying something that when you pick it up, it sort of doesn't feel that heavy. But as you keep carrying it, it gets heavier and heavier. And so I was very happy today to come to share with you at this podcast in the hopes that the announcement of us not putting our prices up was going to lighten your load. So if you've been ha- carrying something heavy or if you've got heaviness on you or if things are just feeling heavy and getting heavier, then I hope that this podcast would have lightened that just a little bit, just give you a little bit of help along the way in this learning lifestyle that you are in, this walk, that this journey that you are taking. It might feel a bit like Mount Everest sometimes, but I'm just going to encourage you to press on and to shine and to enjoy the journey and to be glad. And also to play board games. I just can't help but add that there because of the fact that I just, I don't know, I just picture family sitting around at a table or coffee table or the floor or whatever and just getting together and playing a game. To me, that is another opportunity to lighten the load of the heaviness that is just seems to be putting another rock into the backpack, you know, back to the lady who I met who was a mountaineer, if we can imagine this, just for a moment imagine with me, walking with a backpack on your back and just keep adding another rock and another rock and another rock until you feel so burdened with the weight of this backpack and all the rocks. And I'm hoping that today with this podcast that I can actually help remove a couple of those rocks from your backpack if you're carrying a load. I really hope that that has been the case. And that by listening to this podcast, which I really appreciate, I just feel it to be such a huge uh, privilege for me to be able to sit and talk to you and that I can share with you and that you're listening to this podcast. Thank you for that. And I hope that as you've listened to it, the rocks have been removed from your backpack, one or two or more. And if you're not feeling as though your load is a little lighter, then I'm just going to again appeal to you to use your imagination with me while together we just throw those rocks out. Take them out and throw them far away. Whichever the rock is that's causing you to feel burdened. I've just thought, you know, that I can actually help lighten your load by removing your burden if you have one. That's why I feel it's such a privilege. I mean, I just am so over overcome with the the huge privilege of being able to sit here and share with you. And so I'm just so, so grateful for you having been with me today while you've listened to this podcast. Thank you for listening to it. I hope you can share it with others that you think it might assist. Maybe we can help remove some other people's rocks from their backpacks and lighten their load. And I hope that you will just continue to shine and play games and have a happy, light learning lifestyle.